Good, happy Monday evening. I'm Riley King, and welcome to the Riley King Newscast, right here on the Riley King Network. Let's begin. First step, rebuilt bridge again connects Orange residents weeks after devastating storm. Residents praise DOT workers for rebuilding bridge. Let's take a listen to this video from WMUR News 9, Ray Brewer. Good afternoon, Amy. The townspeople tell me that the day after the storm hit, well, this whole area was filled with debris and the bridge was gone. Now, as you can see, the bridge is back open for business. It was July 11th when those torrential rains fell, and according to the chair of the select board, they damaged about 20% of the 13 miles of uh, road in this uh, tiny town of Orange, a population of only about 300 people. Now, many of the roads in the town severely damaged, but since then, townspeople and hardworking DOT crews have been working to get the roads back together. The townspeople say they're incredibly grateful to those DOT crews. The initial estimate was that it was going to take about a month or maybe more to put that bridge back together again. Instead, they were able to do it in about three weeks. Now, one thing the town select board says is crucial to them going forward is to get that federal disaster declaration. That's because this storm caused about 10 times the damage for their annual road budget. So it's crucial that they get that disaster declaration. The governor is expected to sign a letter requesting that on Friday. Reporting live in Orange, Ray Brewer, WMUR News Now. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Fawn gets help crossing road in West Ossipee. Officials remind public not to interfere with wildlife. Take a look at this video. Okay, and there you go on that video. One you local user spotted a fawn crossing the road in West Ossipee. Officials urge residents not to approach, feed, pet, or house wild animals. Such actions should be left to qualified people with special permits, officials said. Adding that improper care can lead to sickness or death for wild animals. Anyone who suspects a fawn might have been abandoned can contact New Hampshire Fish and Game by emailing wildlife at wildlifenewhampshire.gov or calling 603-271-2464. New Hampshire felony sentence to 20 months on firearm possession charges. Joshua Hooper 
36 of Manchester, informally of Concord, is heading to prison for selling guns illegally in New Hampshire. A felon was sentenced Monday to 20 months in prison for possessing firearms and ammunition. Joshua Hooper, 36, of Manchester, pleaded guilty to the charges in May. He was sentenced in U.S. District Court in Concord today. Police, according to court documents, were tipped off to information that Hooper was selling firearms in the Granite State, something he was not illegally able to do to a previous felony conviction. In July 2017, as part of an investigation, police discovered that Hooper was in possession of a Novosic model N4 rifle and that sold that weapon to another person. Eight months later, police searched his home and found a large quantity of ammunition and other firearm accessories. The case was investigated by the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms and Explosives and the Manchester Police Department. Hooper, according to reports on Patch, was arrested on theft and burglary charges in Merrimack in September 2011. Accused of stealing landscape equipment and tools, he was living in the Alton Woods apartment complex in Concord at the time. About five and a half years later, he was arrested in Amherst on theft charges. Forever Lucky, where New Hampshire officer wounded on duty is released from hospital. Let's take a listen to this video from NECN. Congress, New Hampshire, Catherine Underwood, NBC 10 Boston. 
Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. And all of us here at the Riley King Network are happy that he is released from the hospital and is doing good. Portsmouth Police need your help. They are looking for a woman white and black striped dress. Take a look at this video. If you recognize this woman in the striped dress, contact the Portsmouth Police immediately. And now let's take a look at your U.S. stock market. And here's a look at your U.S. stock market for all of you this Monday evening. Your Dow Joe Industrial Average closed in the red and went down. Your Nasdaq closed in the red and went down. S&P 500 closed in the red and went down. Gold closed in the green went up. Oil closed in the red and went down. U.S. 10 year closed in the red and went down. Euro slash USD closed in the red and went down. And VX closed in the green and went up. Dow plunges 760 points in worst day of 2019 as trade war interferes. Stocks fell sharply Monday as trade war between the world's largest economies interfered with China realistically against President Donald Trump's latest move. Two El Paso dads saved soccer team kids' parents in chaotic aftermath of shooting. When Jimmy and Ray heard that gunfire had erupted at El Paso Walmart, both fathers said they dropped everything they were doing, jumped in their cars, and raced to the store. The two fathers are among dozens of everyday people who turned into heroes when a gunman went on a rampage killing 20 people and injuring 26 others in one of the worst mass shootings in U.S. history. And if you want to read more and watch this video, we will have a link for you on the Riley King Network Facebook page. And that does it for this Monday evening edition of the Riley King Newscast right here on the Riley King Network. I hope you all have a great rest of your Monday evening, and I'll see you back here tomorrow for another newscast. And I'll have a news report coming up in a little bit. Good night, everyone, and bye.